that accursed wizard sending me through this forsaken swamp fetid green mud all over my shiny armor mushrooms the size of trees what is this alien landscape someone watching who's there who goes there show yourself was it the wind or one of these accursed swamp beasts i'm lost i'm lost in this forest of mushrooms by the gods will i survive this hellish landscape someone deliver me don't you worry buddy it's me broken terrain and i'm gonna get you out of here right after the drop hey there youtube it's me broken terrain and i'm bringing you possibly my most favorite project to date. I've got a mushroom forest scatter terrain and I am absolutely pumped with how it turned out and I'm gonna show you how I did it. So uh, come along, here we go. I'm gonna start with my half inch XPS foam. I'm gonna cut uh, several circles, lots of circles uh, of varying sizes and once I've got those circles cut, I'm going to go in and I'm going to soft bevel one side uh, to create a uh, kind of a, a shallow cup without the cup. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how else to describe it, uh, but take a look at the screen and you'll see what I'm talking about. Once you've got a rough shape, make sure to break all those hard edges because we are making uh, nature uh, organic type materials. So we want to keep uh, as many sharp edges away as possible. And then to create the ribbing effect underneath the mushroom caps, I just take my X-Acto and from the center out, um, I'll pull and make a uh, sliding cut and then going back in. And I found that if you worked from the edge in with the pen, you got the best results. And this is just to spread that gap, uh, spread that line and help really um, make these, these ribs uh, show off. The bird wanted to say hello until I put her in front of the camera and then she wanted nothing to do with the camera. Back to work. Don't forget texture. God, I love tin foil. Puts a great texture on everything. And I'm really smashing in those edges and that top. And I even texture the, the bottom, the fins too. And then I created a little uh, visual interest on the top of the mushrooms. And this one, I go all the way to the edges, but my youngest, uh, offered up her opinion. She felt it was best if I didn't go all the way to the edges, but uh, stuck to like a center type uh, texture with those line work. So you'll see um, later on in the video, most of those tops don't go all the way to the edge. And I think I like the way it came out. On to bases. I take my dollar store foam core, my ready board, and my fender washers. I use generally two a base. The smaller ones might just have one. I mark out and uh, carve a, a little depression in the foam for the washer and hot glue them in. And this way they hot glue nice and flush to my cardstock. And I've got some real thick cardstock for these bases hot glue and smash it down and then I'll uh, trim those out and boy this this chipboard was thick 
It took me several passes to get through, uh, but that's okay. It's going to create a really strong, sturdy base for this uh, scatter terrain. This is done. I moved on to the trunk of the mushrooms. I had a piece of wrapping paper doweling that I thought I would uh, use for this. I've got mushrooms of lots of different sizes and ultimately I only use this tube for the two largest of my mushrooms. It's simply much too large for the smaller mushrooms. Uh, I learned from my pirate ship build how to attach a tube like this um, and make it fairly secure. So I carve into the foam so that I give more room uh, or more surface for the tube and the glue to interact. And this idea ultimately doesn't work, but I thought I'd include it with the video just to show you that, uh, you know, a lot of these projects you're you're moving and you're progressing and you're thinking about it as you do it and sometimes not all of your ideas pay off and this is one of those instances i thought i would use my rope to create this really neat texture down the stalks of the mushrooms and then i could have these really cool gnarled um, fungal roots and uh, boy, the rope did not pay off. It was not looking the way I wanted it to. It was hard to control. So I tore it off and started again. I'm going to re-glue the top. Um, I'm a little upset about those ripped holes in the ribbing, but not too big a deal. They're gonna be under the mushroom anyway. Um, and then I thought I'd switch gears for just a little bit. Like I said, the tubing's much too big uh, a mushroom stock for anything other than my two biggest mushrooms. So I carved a stock out of XPS foam. And this way, it doesn't have to be that um, strange mechanical straight up and down. This way I get a nice curve and it adds a more natural look to the mushroom. So I'm just going to go in, break the edges, round it off a bit, and, uh, and test fit my mushroom cap. With some hot glue, I start securing the mushrooms. With my carved XPS foam stock, I found it, um, I found I got a better connection with stock to mushroom cap if I beveled the top. And that just uh, created a little more uh, connection via the surfaces, a little more surface contact with the hot glue. It worked well. And then realizing a little too late, oh yeah, that's right, I wanted a swampy water feature on a lot of these. So I quickly sketch out a small pool and then get in there with my X-Acto, cut that out. And uh, here's another stock. This one I really start to get uh, crazy and creative with it. This is a double stock with two of the smaller mushroom caps. And if you notice, I'm, I'm almost building a stairway of mushrooms. And this is going to help characters uh, get from the floor of the mushroom swamp up to and on top of the mushroom caps and the mushroom forest trees there. So you can see I've created a little, uh, a little stairway out of mushrooms. 
I do this for a couple of the pieces. And this is to allow, you know, points of entry to the upper parts in several locations on the table. Next, I'll grab my X-Acto or crafting knife and I'm going to bevel the edges of these bases so that they blend in a little bit and they don't look so silly. And then I had abandoned using the rope as a texture up and down the stock, but I thought I would revert to an old DM Scotty method and allow the hot glue gun to create the texture for me. So from the top of the mushroom down, I just run these beads of hot glue and this is gonna create that great texture you see later on in the video. And uh, this is the greatest, most fun part of this project, the roots of these mushrooms. So the bases look very, very plain until you start going crazy with all these mushroom roots. I started carving all of them out of little um, scraps of XPS foam. They started really easy as little 90 degree bends and turns and then I started getting nuts. Here's a double root. Um, it splits off into two down at the ground and glues onto the side of the mushroom and it it looks amazing. These roots are really what sold this project for me. As soon as I started attaching these roots to these mushrooms, I knew I had something special. Look at that. And I'm going to give you a close-up so you can see the texture and the roots. Man, that looks good. I was so excited at this point. And then... And then I leveled up, ladies and gentlemen. I started using the craft foam because I didn't need to carve down the, uh, the thickness anymore. I started getting absolutely nuts with the roots shape. Double roots, triple roots, bends and crooks. Oh, you have to try this project, YouTube. Here they are in all their gorgeous mushroom glory. And you can see all these bends and twists from these roots. And they are what really sell this terrain. Here he is, our mini for scale. And there he is using our mushrooms as stairs to get to the top for some killing. I love it. And now we'll get to the basics. It's time to uh, finish them up and get them to the painting stage. We're going to use our white DVA glue. We're going to paint it along the base and then we're going to flock with the craft sand. While I wait for the glue and the craft sand to dry, it's time to make a ton of mini mushrooms. So I pull out a piece of parchment paper and then just drop dollops, uh, round dollops of hot glue down on the parchment paper. And they're going to harden and dry and make the best mini mushroom caps. Now that they've cooled, I'm gonna grab a piece of uh, craft doweling, very small doweling, trim it to very small stock sizes, and um, I ultimately turn to super glue. Here you can see me attacking the stock with uh, a white PVA glue, but uh, YouTube, you guys know, I am not a patient man, and I'm not going to wait for white glue to dry. So super glue, and super glue accelerant it is, 
Here's a shot of all of them. Here's a close up. And I will later put them all in a box and prime them up white. After the tiny mushrooms, I hit my large mushrooms with my Black Magic Craft base coat, half matte Mod Podge, half black acrylic paint. I let them dry, and then it's time to hit my mushrooms and their stalks up with a buttermilk. Get in there, all those nooks and crannies, get those roots, all sides of them, under the mushroom cap, above the mushroom cap I'm going to cover the whole mushroom in this buttermilk color here's some up close glamour shots of the painting at work and you can see all that texture from the hot glue is going to pay off big time while I wait for those to dry, I go back to my mini mushrooms and I'm going to paint three colors. I've got a violet in this purple. I'm going to do a third of these mini mushrooms with the purple. I'm going to do another third in a blue turquoise. And the final third, I'm going to do in a bright red. Later on, when they're all dry, I'll go back in with a toothpick and that white buttermilk. And I will put uh, the classic spots all over the tops of the mushrooms. I didn't capture that on camera. You're just going to have to trust me. Then I go in with a peach. I think it's a sun-kissed peach and I'm going to give these all a nice uh, I don't want to call it a dry brush it's more like a wet brush a very heavy heavy uh, dry brush of the peach color on the white Now with Apple Barrel's Flamenco Red, I really like this color. I'm going to uh, color the tops of the mushrooms again with another heavy, heavy dry brush. You might call it a wet brush. I'm still going to let some of that texture um, dictate where that paint goes. I'm going to let some of that peach shine through, uh, but they are going to be majorly red at the top. And then I really wanted these to be kind of alien. Uh, maybe you use these for the underdark. Maybe you could use these in a sci-fi setting as a different planet. But I really thought that that purple, uh, a purple ground would really, really make these things pop and look amazing. Besides, I use browns and greens constantly. It was a lot of fun to use some strange colors. And uh, once that violet dried, I went in and I dry brushed with that turquoise from the small mushroom caps. And this just created this really, really cool uh, ground look, this ground color. And I thought, man, these look alien as heck. This is gonna make for some amazing scatter terrain. Keeping with the idea that these were alien or otherworldly, I decided I wanted to do some green water. So I picked two green colors, one lighter than the other. And around the edges, I'm going to paint the light green. And then I'm going to glob in some of the dark green in the middle. And I used this opportunity to practice a little wet blending. Uh, I don't often do that. Um, you can 
can see I've, I'm blending the dark with the light green there. And I, I like the effect, it turns out really nice. Unfortunately, I ruin it right here with the wash. I wish I had kept the wash out of the water and kept that green, that bright, bright green for the water. Um, live and learn, I'll know for next time. And YouTube, learn from my mistakes. If you try this project, don't add wash to that water. Make sure that water is nice and bright and alien-like. It's only going to enhance the look of these mushrooms. Uh, but I just hit them with a brown wash and I get that wash everywhere. And uh, the mushrooms just jump with this wash. They look absolutely amazing. Once the wash dries, it's now time to start decorating. And I'm really, uh, really enjoying that homemade flock of mine, uh, the cut up rope that mimics this brown grass. And I thought uh, this brown grass on top of this purple ground is gonna look amazing. Uh, it's gonna, it's still gonna look very alien, but this brown grass is gonna uh, add a realism to the purple, <laughs> a realism to the purple ground. And uh, boy, it looks amazing. This is from my POV cam. I'm wearing my phone on top of my head for this. Uh, but I think the camera angle works really well. And you just uh, shake it on, tap the excess off, and then I go around the edges and, and fluff the edges up so that the grass is sticking up along the edges. And you can see the little mushrooms. I've gone back in with that toothpick and just placed lots of dots with that buttermilk, that white buttermilk color. And now I'm just super gluing them in to uh, little nooks and crannies and in the middle of some of these larger uh, root root formations and I just I'm having a blast having a blast with this uh, making sure I spread the colors the red the blue the purple and I'm not even done I go to my little craft bag and I find some uh, decorative moss and lichen and again just find the right places to super glue this stuff down just lots of little punches of color so uh, I've let the, the wash darken the mushrooms, and then I punch it up with all these little mushrooms with all this color. And then it's time to fill in my water features. I've got several uh, with little pools, and I turned to my Gorilla Glue, ugh, my Gorilla Glue epoxy trick, and I screwed it up hardcore this first one. Thankfully, my wife knows me pretty well, and she bought two for me. I had an incredibly difficult time fishing it in over the edges and under the mushroom. I had to use the stir sticks. I would get a big large glop onto the stick and then I would funnel it in. Well this took time and it took so much time doing this very first one that by the time I finished I went back. Um, to start a second one and I had a nasty little surprise in my glue cup it was a puck of glue I really screwed this one up there it is my gorilla glue sucker and I just <laughs> I couldn't believe it uh, thank god the wife got me a second one thank you so much hon and this time I learned from my mistakes. I would squeeze out only enough for each one and I would do each one individually and then go back in and mix a new bunch of Gorilla Glue. Might be time to just try actual resin. Uh, when it warms up, it's winter here in Michigan, so when it warms up I'll hit them with a a sealing spray but for now they're complete and I am in love with these things they turned out 
absolutely amazing. They're simply stunning. And on top of looking beautiful, they create so much uh, dynamic, tactical decision work on the table. They break line of sight. They offer multiple points of elevation. YouTube, these might be my best project to date. And I want you to try them, please. Um, but here's where I tell you, if you like this video, hit like, subscribe to my channel, please share the video. I'm trying to grow my audience and I could really use your help. And uh, until then, like each other, love each other, and craft on.